Okay, folks, welcome back to the channel. Clunkers and Classics. And we're going to start by pressure washing, <laughs> pressure washing all this uh, crap off this car that's been accumulating for 34 years. It's almost starting to grow trees on there. And to degrease all the engine. And then once we get that started and done, we will get it all jacked up on four big jack stands and we can get up underneath there and take a good look and see what's rusted, see what's bent, see what needs replacing and we'll get started on that. Uh, so here's the pressure washer. I'll just start to show you a little bit of it. It's gonna take a while, so I won't. I'll just film a little bit of it. Stuff's been growing on there a long time. gonna do the whole engine here I uh, covered off the covered up the new uh, holly and uh, everything that I think water can get in uh, all this dirt off. I got some degreaser that I'll put on here after I get most of this big stuff off of. I'll spray it with degreaser, let it sit, and uh, spray it again. And all this stuff where the oil come up when I had oil in the cylinders, I'm gonna get all that crap off there. Well, anyway, I will be back when I got it cleaned up, and we will go from there. Okay, folks, it's the next day. Got it all, got some big news, but first, we'll look it over here. I power washed all the grime and uh, dirt and moss and stuff off of it. And all pretty clean. I just made uh, this segment, but the radio was on in the garage, and YouTube does not like music playing in the background, whether it's on a radio or what. So I'm remaking this segment, because I didn't want to take a chance of it being uh, not, uh, I'd have to delete the audio. So I cleaned up most of the engine. Uh, there's still some hardcore grime on there, but it's pretty clean. You can see the different colors black valve covers uh, blue on the engine okay then off the other car if you're new to the channel I got another one exactly like this it had these 15 inch rallies on it I took them off the other car we're gonna go over over there in a minute and got these uh, four tires from my tire pile one's a 60 one's a 70 but they're the same height put them on the back this is all I got for 15s is uh, two little 195s, but we're going to put them on there for now. Later on, way down the road, we'll, I'll buy all new tires for it. Okay, so the big news is, if you'd been following me, the other car, which is identical to this, same year, same color, same stripe, same RT, uh, I was going by the tags underneath the hood. You can see this one says 318. But it has the engine transmission in it. The other one is just a roller. So the other car says 360. So I assumed this is the 318. The other car is a 360. 
but I'm restoring this one because, well, the motor transmission's in it. We got it running. <laughs> now, I started running the numbers last night. Got out the, uh, the old titles and everything. And since I had this fender tag cleaned off, you can't see it real good here, but I did a pencil tracing of it. And I run all them numbers and the VIN number on the dash. Now this car here, fender tag, VIN number on the dash, and the door jam all match the VIN number. And the fifth number is an L. That stands for 360 four barrel high performance engine. Okay. Uh, 1978 they came out with three different versions of the 360 we'll go over horsepower here in a minute I didn't cover that on the last video first engine was a 362 barrel 155 horse second engine was a 364 barrel 160 horse third engine is a 364 barrel E58 220 horsepower that's what this one is this tag on the fender has an E58 on it and I'll go over here's my pencil tracing of it and in the bottom left corner it says E58 and D36 beside it which is a little bit up in the air whether it's a 904 Torco flight or the 727 okay so this has the highest horsepower engine for 78 actually the horsepower is even higher than a 400 that come in the bigger cars but we'll go over horsepower real quick horsepower ratings were manipulated and stuff for the insurance companies and this one was rated 220 horse at 4,000 rpm I mean really you could just uh, uh, advance the timing a little bit and up it to 5,000 and your horsepower is way up. The other thing about horsepower is uh, before 1971, they went by net horsepower, not gross. So if you want to compare this horsepower to a 71 or below, you can add about 100 horsepower to this. So that bumps it up to two, from 220 to about 320. You advance the timing and uh, delete the lean burn. You're up to about 350 horsepower on this from the factory, realistically. Okay, the other, the other thing, uh, let's see what all the numbers mean here. So the other car, we'll go over there in a minute, its VIN number, fifth number, is a G, and that comes out to a 318 two-barrel. Very strange. So this car was a 360 car, the other car was a 318. This hood obviously come from the other car, but it's kind of weird that it's wrecked. It's wrecked there. The fender's missing, so you'd assume it was in a fender bender. Uh, but I think they took this hood off the other car. Why, I don't know. This car was obviously ran and drove, so why would they put a wrecked hood on here? Strange. You know, it, it's 30, 40 years of history that I don't know about. I've had it for three. The guy I bought it from, I don't know how long he owned it, but he, he had bought both of them. Uh, so I don't know, history beyond that, I don't know. Okay, so what else we want to go over? Some quarter mile times, which I mentioned in, my, in the last video. It has the kit car, 78, as 15.9 in the quarter. The kit car was just a cosmetic deal. It had 43 for Richard Petty on the door. It had some, you know, uh, 
I think it, all the body effects, uh, ground effects, the uh, hood pins and little, I think it had a little spoiler thing on it. All that, but it doesn't say it didn't had a different engine because it only had three engines in 78. With this engine in this car is the highest one. So it had it at 15.9 in the quarter, which blows away every, everyone else. The uh, Trans Am, the Z28 Corvette, and the Mustang was, you know, 140 horsepower or something, 302. Okay, now another guy posted, he says according to Dodge the E58 engine which this one is is a police interceptor engine it has a super flow heads the police cam heavy duty valve springs cold air induction big dual exhaust windage tray the double row timing chain and the dual snorkel intake air cleaner now, if you remember my other video, I found the dual snorkel air cleaner in the back seat of this. Kind of strange, huh? And without the, uh, it had the holes for the lean burn, but this lean burn wasn't on it. And so that's what came in a police interceptor, was a dual snorkeler. And I have it. So whether it came on this car or not, I don't know. Okay, the other thing to verify 100% is there are numbers on the bottom left of the block that will tell you if it's the E58 364 barrel. On the right side of the engine is the partial VIN number. So once I get this jacked up, which I'm going to do here in a little while when I finish making this video, jack it up on uh, four big jack stands and we're going to get underneath there and uh, start looking for stuff like that uh, more rust structure uh, let me see what else the uh, it is an RT the numbers on that fender tag is uh, one of them's A57 that's the RT package so it's definitely an RT uh, also has console bucket seats, dual reclining bucket seats, dual sports mirrors, uh, AC inside hood release, some custom moldings. It did have a code that says N94, and I couldn't find out what that was for this particular car. Older styles, the N94 stood for fiberglass hood from 70 to 71. What the newer code means, I don't know. I think that's all the uh, numbers that I found out so far. Okay. So it's very strange that, you know, I, originally I thought this car was in a fender bender and that hood. Someone took the fender off and parked it because it was wrecked that we know now. So we'll go, I'll show the other car just for these viewers that haven't seen the other one, just tuning in. I'm gonna look at the other car here. <laughs> oh, this, uh, the sway bar was in the back seat of the other car, but the other car and this car don't have one on it. So I think, since it was in a junkyard, somebody must have taken it off another car and thrown it in the back seat. Uh-oh. See, so this car, there's the tag, it's a 360. Okay, vacuum hose routing for 364 barrel. 
one good thing is it's not very rusty just on that edge but see both cars the hoods are all loose this one ain't even bolted on see so they must have taken this hood off the other car and just stuck it on this one and all this time I thought this was a 360 car <coughs> So I don't know what they done. If the wrecked hood was on this car, it doesn't make much sense, does it? Because if it was wrecked right here, all this stuff would be busted out. Unless they took, the only thing I could think of is they took all the, the hood, grill, lights, and everything from the other car and put it on this one because they were fixing this one up. And then either sold the engine transmission out of it or took it out to rebuild it and lost interest, something like that. So it's very, very strange. <coughs> the other thing we'll go over is the all the rear ends. I think it was seven and a quarter inch would be in the, uh, like this one here, little six bangers. And it says that the eight and a quarter inch rear axle should be in the wagons heavy duty and v8 versions and the sure grip posi was optional so i couldn't find any codes to uh say which whether it came with a posi or not this one or the other one but i'm hoping go back over to the other car <coughs> you know if somebody somebody ordered this car with the 364 barrel high performance c58 engine you would think to go for the optional uh posi track sure grip so we don't know for sure that's another thing i'll look underneath there see if i can find some actual codes so i believe that's all the numbers and stuff information so far i got on it if anybody wants to uh, add anything, put it in the comments section. So my next step is to uh, jack it up, put it on four jack stands. We'll get under there, look for rust, look for the engine numbers. Uh, the gas tank is dented under here. We'll look at that a little bit closer. Uh, the other, I looked at the other gas tanks on the other car and the six cylinder green one. I'll probably, if it's the same size, should be on the green six-cylinder one. We're going to take that gas tank out and put it in this one. It actually looks a lot cleaner, less rust, and it's only been off the road about five years. So it shouldn't be all internally screwed. And then we'll uh, blow out all the gas lines from the front to the back with air. Then run some gas through it. Uh, so that's what we'll be doing next That's the plan uh, I Think I will at least put the hood the other hood on here See if you're new too, I also got a whole bunch of extra parts for these Shortly after I bought these two I bought a hundred dollars worth of parts I got another hood white hood two white doors and a rear bumper and My original plan was to put the other white hood on this car but uh, we're going to use the original hood then I'm 99.9% .9 sure it came off this one with the 360 sticker on there and try to leave it I'm, try, I'm trying to leave this or keep it as original as possible for value wise and stuff like that even though I may not paint it the same color uh, I want it to be pretty close to original so you check all the numbers that's what it came with so I'd like to put the hood maybe the other door and maybe the green fender from the six cylinder one on here maybe take all the grill and everything for now even though it's broke take all that off uh, the other RT and put it on here so it, it's semi looks good for now so anyway, I'll be back in a little while when I get this jacked up. I'll see if I can get the camera under there and we can look at stuff. And I will see you all next segment.
Okay. Guys, great news. I'm going to get you underneath here. I'll show you the numbers. Get this flashlight to work. Just cleaned it all off. Right behind the starter. Can you see that? Right there. I don't know if you can see that, but according to my notes, it says four zero zero six eight three zero and then it says three stamp three sixty right beside it. So that's the original motor. Well, it's a 360. Uh, the other side, I think the numbers are underneath the motor mount. But the only thing I could see stamped on the other side was a 78. Which I assume stands for the year. Uh, it's it, it, like this one, it was all packed with uh, oil and everything. I scraped this one off, but the other side, it's up underneath that motor mount. And I... I didn't bother scraping all that off. But right there, those numbers there confirm that it is a 360. And right now I'm 99% sure that this is the factory engine from this car. So that's great news. Okay. Look underneath here. The bottom of the radiator supports a little bit bent back. I could replace that or just straighten it. I'm not sure yet. Uh, right before the oil pan is scraped. Looks like they did a little Dukes of Hazard. And the oil pan's got a dent in it. A couple of dents. And it's stamped with a number. I know it's going to be upside down. 392. I don't know what that means. Uh, because I read somewhere that... Uh, uh, truck had a different oil pan, so I don't know Okay, so what else it's got the single exhaust. I don't know I kind of doubt that these came with true dual exhaust Maybe just the cop cars did But this one is gonna get dual exhaust and most likely headers although I read that These manifolds are pretty good. They're just like headers. You wouldn't get much off of them but I think that was just one guy's opinion. Uh, I'll do some more research. Floorboards are pretty crusty. Right up here. That's kind of shot right there. Uh, let me go at the back here. The structure itself, this frame and everything looks pretty damn good. That's the main thing. You don't want, you know, or this suspension, everything bolts to it. You don't want that all crusty. So that doesn't look too bad. I don't know if we can go over here. These bushings, they look gold, but they're not really uh, shot or nothing. Um, it more uh, solidifies that it's an 80,000 mile car. You see, it's got the front sway bar here. Sway bar bushings aren't too bad. You know, if it had 180,000, these things would be completely shot. This thing would just be a big rattle trap. But actually, you know, even the little bushings here for the sway bar, it's not bad. And these ones and this one, oh, that was loose. I don't know where that mounts to. We'll have to see. Oh, it just mounts to the top subframe. I think it just needs to be tightened up. It's got a bolt up there. Okay, so let's look at the back. Got her all up on jack stands so we can take a good peek at it. This gas gas uh, tank here, it's got a little scrape here, but she's really screwed right here. It's just caved in, and probably being at the junkyard, it might be from a forklift or something. Highly doughty, backed into something. This back bumper, although it's dented anyway, it's it's all crusty, but 
since it's dented, it's going to be replaced anyway, since I got a couple more of them. So I'm not too concerned about from here back. That's all going to go. Okay, the inner quarters, you can see here, the inner quarter thing here is all screwed too. So when I, I can't just put a patch panel, I'm going to have to put a patch panel back here too. And I'm going to try not to cut anything. I'm not, well, I'm not going to cut anything off the other RT. It'll be the green, the green one, or I'm going to just going to make them. I get weld metal here on the out, outside. Okay, this exhaust has been all rigged. Got a little clamp here. Uh, I didn't, I don't know where the rear, rear end numbers are. I'm not too concerned about that right now. I don't know how to tell if it's a posi or not. I know you're supposed to be able to turn the wheels and count the teeth and all that crap. Let's see. So the structure here, frame, looks good. All up there, and where the jack stands are on it, and where the leaf spring mounts, all that looks good. This floor part here, like I said, from inside the trunk, it looks good. And uh, all that structure's good. You can see the hole right there where I showed in another video, put my hand through it. That's a big hole there, but that just could have been from uh, water settling, you know, leaking through the door or something over 30 odd years and just making a big puddle. I don't think the other side is like that. See, so it's just that, that's the main part. And then up front by your feet on the driver's side, it's starting to, there's, a little rust holes and stuff so it's that's probably all going to be replaced and whether this is the same i will probably since i'm going to be cutting up that green four door i'll be cutting patch panels out of that for the floor and use it for this one because i don't believe i'll have to double check but i don't believe anybody makes anything for these cars other than weather stripping because they're the same as a dart or duster or something like that as far as floor pans go, I don't know. I'd rather put new floor pans in it, but if not, we got a parts car. So it's got the multi-leaf springs. I don't know if the cheap ones have the single. I'll have to look on that six cylinder. So we're gonna cut all this exhaust off. That's where the catalytic converters cut off there. I sold them. This one and the one out the other one a while back when my guys came by uh lots of dirt daubers so really not too bad the wheel well up there is good certainly not a northern car if this was from up north it, there would be nothing left of it and it wouldn't be worth doing anything to so for down here in the south this is pretty bad but i know better it's not that bad it's not that bad. I grew up in Canada, so I know what northern cars and salt and everything do. We don't have salt down here, but look at what it's done without salt. That's why there's none of these cars left. Because uh, they just rot, rot too fast. Okay, so let me see here. Here's the gas lines coming out. I'm going to have to follow all them. I'll do that off, off camera. I don't think, I think that's them going down the side rocker panel all the way to the front. I don't think they're going to be rusted through, but we'll check them. Oh, dirt up there. Okay, so I just thought I'd show you underneath. Let's look at this quarter panel over here. And I use POR15. I'm probably going to do a dedicated video on POR15. Uh, but I, I use that on everything. I'll scuff all that up and just paint or spray POR15 over everything. Uh, this quarter, this inner quarter panel here is good. So it's going to be all black under here from that POR15. And I don't know if it's got an undercoating, if this is undercoating. Yeah, I think it is. So it was even undercoated and fucking rusted. Oh no, that's a, oh, that's a gas tank. 
up here in the frame. This frame here, yeah, it's under coating. I'm not going to scrape all that off. I'm just going to scrape all the loose stuff off, wire brush type style, and just paint everything black. Not right now, but. Okay, so I just thought I'd show you underneath here. And, uh,. I have to, I'm going to take all these tires off. We'll check the brakes too. Since I got no brakes, we're going to have to check all the... There's some brake lines here. They're, they don't really look too bad. But we'll follow them all the way up. Same as the gas lines. Make sure none of them are leaking or rusted. And I'll have to go over the brakes. So it'd be nice to have this thing have brakes and uh, getting gas on its own. So I'll be doing some of that next. I will come back uh in a little while on the next segment okay guys show you what i got going on here i just took the hood off the other rt although it's got a bunch of hail dents on it my other extra hood's probably better but i wanted to save it because of the 360 deal right there and the 360 vacuum diagram in fact i'm going to put a little bit of glue right there and glue that up yeah the other green hood I got is mint no rust this one we got some rust going here here there a little bit there so what I'm gonna do uh, get some sandpaper we're gonna pour 15 it for now so what you do loose all the rust that and uh, I'm gonna do most of that off camera I was probably just scuff areas like this lightly and I've just got a little pint I think it is so I'm gonna so I like to put a fender on this so I'm gonna pour 15 all this right here and as much as I can with what I got left I'll go under here but the main part is the hood so we can get the hood on there and protect the new carb and the engine everything from water and uh but i can't fully mount the hood until i get that fender on there but i'm not i'm just going to do the hood first but anyway uh i'm just going to go over this and scuff it and i'll come back when i put the 415 on there and show you that okay i uh just lightly sanded it and uh, blew it off with air. This is the pour 15 here. It's just a little can. Uh, I usually buy it by quarts, but I ordered a whole bunch of those, whatever they are, pints or half pints or something, because uh, if you, a big quart thing, you better use all of it because you can't really reuse it. You can put the, put the cap back on, but uh, it, it'll weld, basically weld that lid right shut on it. So I've been buying these little ones. So if I have a little job, I open one up and I use it all up, okay? So what we're doing here is we're just, this is, uh, nowhere near a finished product but we're just gonna coat the rust to keep it from rusting okay and this POR 15 POR stand POR stands for paint over rust and it encapsulates encapsulates the rust and uh, it works really good makes it I mean it's supposed to be chip proof and but it only works over rust it, it won't work over paint and bare metal like this stuff here it's dripping on the paint that's gonna flake off so later on what I'll do is uh, sand all this down and paint it under the hood you know right before I paint the whole car which is probably gonna be who knows how long so that's why I'm just putting a little bit now 
on it to keep it from rusting any farther. Because uh, those things rust fast and it's just been rusting. So I'm going to get in as much as I can. Now this pour 15, you can... Uh, you can brush it on or paint it on with a with a spray painter, but I like brushing it on. It is very potent uh, fumes off of it, and I can just imagine with a with a without a respirator on, you would be uh, or you could wear a respirator, but. So anyway, you, you uh, bypass all that by just using a brush. You're just doing little jobs. And this is not a finished coat. You don't put this on as paint or anything like that. What it's good for is for underneath a car, mainly, because it's not what they call UV resistant, so it'll fade out. I don't think it'll come off, but it it'll fade out real bad and so but what you can they sell it or you could just use a regular paint top coat it so after you do all this of course I'll be sanding it because like I said it don't stick to paint I'll be sanding it all down and uh, painting the whole thing but you can paint over top of it and what I usually do like if I paint a frame or something like that I'll put one coat of this on there because this stuff is expensive this stuff's like 50 bucks a quart through your local paint supply place and uh, I buy it off eBay and get it down to about 34 35 bucks a quart so If I do like a frame, I'll put one coat of this on there. That's all it needs, just like I'm doing now. Just put one coat and then mix up some paint. Your favorite paint that you want to use for frames or whatever. But I would just use a regular glossy uh, car paint. I'll probably go over and get a little bit more, but I want to show you the... We're going to do the fender deal here. And do all this so it stops you can see here it's pretty bad I probably should weld in a new piece of metal but it's not a structure thing or nothing it's not where the hood mounts and you don't want to get this thing on any threads or anything because it'll you'll never get a bolt to thread on it or nut leaving these bolts in once I get it around like that and if some leaks in I'm just going to use a deal just unthread it well, that's the wrong size just unthread it a little bit because if you don't that'll be well that bolt will be welded in there and don't you should wear uh plastic gloves when you're doing this because if you get it on your skin it, you will not get it off you'll get a little bit of it off but it'll take you like 29 showers and with a scrub brush to, to get it completely off before it wears off so be careful on that I was going to do a devoted video to this poor 15. I may still do it just to. But basically, it's good for the undercarriage stuff like this right under here. All under here. It's coated on there. You feel lucky. Put on a respirator, put it in a spray can, and just spray the hell out of it. 
but I don't want to waste any of it with a brush. You're not wasting any of it. And spray spray gun there, you're you're losing a lot of it. So anyway, I'm just gonna go use up in that can and do all this. And then let it dry and uh, mount that hood on here. And then what I'm going to do is go and take that fender and that gas tank off that green six-cylinder one. I robbed the green, uh, can I put them on here? These hinges here, you see they're green? They work perfectly. The ones that were on here and the other one, I think were kind of bound up and I didn't want to take a chance of putting them on there trying to close the hood and have it bound up so them green ones work and it's just one bolt extra bolt taking it off so I just uh, took them off so I got that so off that green car yeah I'll take the gas tank oh and uh, when we're looking it over in my first video of them there was two brand new uh, I guess the rear shocks I'm not sure I'll have to see two new shocks in the box I'm gonna get them out. I don't know when I'll put them on, but uh, I'll at least get them over here in this trunk. Everything, everything that I, I'm gonna use for this car, I'll put it in the trunk. Okay, so I'm gonna go over and do the rest of that. I probably used uh, almost half of it. I use the rest up here off camera. Get that done and let it dry. Oh shit! I have to get it out. This Get some thinner and wipe them off my stickers. But anyway, I'll be back. Okay, folks. It's the end of the day. It's time to wrap this up. I put the hood on. So we don't have to prop it up with a stick anymore. Got the hinges on there. But it's pretty dented up. It's got some big dents and uh, a lot of big hail dents. So I don't know. I may... I may go with that green hood off that other car. But for now, that's gonna be towards the end. Uh, I got all the tires put on the rims, but two of them are leaking around the edges. I don't know if it's the tires or the rims. They were kind of pitted around the lips there. So I don't know what I'm gonna have to, gonna do with them. Uh, I'll just have to wait. Took me a couple hours just to do these four. They were a pain in the ass. Uh, I'll take them apart. I think they're pitted around where they seem. Uh, anyway, what else? I put these little side deals on here. They're just sitting on there. All the clips are kind of broken vent. And I just put them on there for now. Just so it, when I come out to look at it, it looks halfway decent. Uh, these were the brand new shocks. In the, uh, in the green car, and also in the green car, is a brand new set of uh, front brake disc pads. So that's a couple of things I don't have to pay for. But I think these are the uh, front shocks. And also, if you all hadn't seen, here's that double snorkeler. It apparently comes in the uh, only the police interceptor engines. And that was in the back seat. So I'm going to clean that up and the lid and paint it. And what else? Uh, I don't know if I'll start. I don't think I've started this up in this video. So I need to interview new people. Connect the battery real quick. I'm just about out of uh, time on my SD card. I'm just going to try to wrap this up before it ran out.
Okay, my SD card ran out before it was supposed to. So we'll just finish this segment up. I think it's binding up. I know I can buy a, an adapter to raise this up here so this thing straighter, but I didn't want to mess this up too much. I didn't want the transmission not shifting right. That's why I was, in the other video, I was trying to get this closer to where it's supposed to be. But it's too bound up. It's, I wanted to try something, see if it dies when I take off this lean bird deal. dies when you pull that out so it has to be connected that's what I thought but as I said in another video all these wires are all some of them are bare and kinked and taped it looks like they've had a lot of problems with this in the past so I'm gonna research and buy that kit to bypass that I thought maybe they had it bypassed if they were using the police double snorkeler there and uh, but now it's going to be connected. I mean I could connect this up to the other double snorkeler but uh, I'd rather bypass it because it's just going to be this is just going to be problems in the future. So anyway that's another thing I'll have to work on but right now it seems to run good. I need to do another oil change and filter. Uh, to it uh, Get all that sludge out of it So I think that's gonna wrap up uh, This video we got a lot done we found out it's a real uh, 364 barrel high-performance engine confirmed it that it's the original engine in the car and uh, inspected it over real good. See what we need to fix on the floor and the rust. And uh, so I got all this work to do here. I was going to paint them wheels, but if they're leaking, if they're too pitted, uh, I'm going to mess with them tomorrow. Maybe take them apart again and see if it's the tire or the pits in them. If, the, if it's pits in them, then it's, they're going to be no good. I'm going to get another set. I bought a set because these are almost like the Chevy Corvette Monte Carlo type rims and I bought a brand new set for my Chevelle they're only like uh, 68 bucks each uh, I don't know if they make Chrysler they probably do so I don't know I got that set of 14s like this set here I could take them apart and get some big 14 inch tires on it but I think 
it's probably missing a couple of center caps. But anyway, that's the tire situation. Problem with that holly is it don't start up real good right away. Yeah, it's bound up. We're gonna have to fix that. So anyway. Next episode, we'll get the gas tank on there and uh, get it running on its own. Take the wheels off, check the brakes. I got the new brake pads, but the main thing is to check for leaks and check the rear brakes, drum brakes. See if they need drums and see if we can get her uh, running on its own fuel and driving so it can stop and also. I need to check on a brand new radiator uh, if not I got that other old one in that fifth Avenue looks the same but I'd rather not put it in an old used one problem is on eBay they have those ones with the plastic tanks so I could either buy a cheap one like that or buy a double two three four core aluminum one spend a couple hundred bucks but I think this car is going to be worth putting some money into. It's pretty rare. It's going to be worth quite a bit more than the average Valari Aspen RT Roadrunner since it's got that motor in it. As long as I can keep that motor together. But it's definitely, that's the engine that people uh, want to rebuild if they swap motors or something in one of these cars. That's what they want to do. They want, to, they want that engine. So it's car's gonna be worth some money it was definitely worth fixing up and spending a few extra hundred bucks here and there on uh, stuff like radiators and get some headers for it and all that stuff but for now there's the old tires off of it there they're all, it's all rotted so anyway uh, subscribe uh, keep in touch for the next episode going to be a bunch of episodes on this getting her ready but I'll, I'll go little by little and we'll get her done uh, if you're into body work I'm going to be cutting out these quarter panel patches and uh, floor patches and we're going to get some more pour 15 and do this whole trunk clean it out real good sand it we'll pour 15 all this area here uh, all kinds of stuff coming up on this car so uh subscribe like comment and i appreciate y'all uh watching me do all this hope you're learning something uh and we'll see you next video Love.